we come to practice the Dhamma because we want to have some priorities in our lives, realizing that some forms of happiness are long-term and harmless, others are short-term and harmless, and others are short-term and harmful. And in some cases, some kinds of happiness interfere with others. It's like plants in a garden. Some plants you can put in and they don't kill each other. Others, though, like eucalyptus, you plant eucalyptus in your garden and after all you have nothing but eucalyptus. It snuffs out everything else in the garden. And it's the same with some forms of happiness. The short-term harmful happiness gets in the way of the long-term and harmless. So you have to have a sense of priorities. Which, which do you really want? You have to choose. Because if you go for the short-term and harmful, the long-term harmless is just not going to happen. Because long-term happiness doesn't come floating by on its own. It's not quick. It's not easy. It requires effort. It requires sacrifice. But when you have a very strong sense that it's worth it, then you should be willing to give up the lesser happinesses, the lesser pleasures, especially the ones that are, are harmful and they get in the way. So in other words, you've got to get the eucalyptus out of your garden. And if it's been there for a long time, then you have to do something to the soil so you can plant better plants. And it's the same with the practice. If you've been engage, engaging in bad habits, you've got to be really strict about the precepts. And the precepts are the soil in which meditation can grow. And so you know if something is harmful, you say, nope, nope, nope. And you have to be firm with yourself, because all of the harmful things have quick pleasures. And if the mind is hungry for pleasure, it's going to go for them. So you've got to give it better food. Sometimes you, when the mind finally does settle down into concentration, there's the food right there. But until that point, you have to have a strong sense of conviction that this really is worth it. You've seen other people benefit from this practice. And you'd like to have some of those benefits as well. Then when the soil is prepared, okay, then the mind can grow. And it can grow good things. The pleasure of mindfulness, the pleasure of concentration, the pleasure of discernment. These go deep into the heart. The pleasure of the sublime attitudes, having good will for everybody. Compassion for everybody who's suffering, empathetic joy for everybody who's happy. Equanimity for everybody whose behavior can't you can't change to be become more skillful. So you don't focus on them, you focus on the areas where you can make a difference. You feed the mind in this way, then it gets gets strong. It becomes easier and easier to say no to the things that you know are harmful, no matter how pleasant they may be. And easier and easier to strive for things that may require a lot of effort, but you know that the rewards are going to come and they're going to be more than worth the effort. That, the Buddha said, is a sign of discernment, your ability to talk yourself out of doing things you know are unskillful, even though you like them and your ability to talk yourself into doing things that you know are skillful even though you don't like doing them. Because you're willing to take the long term, take the long view. And you get your priorities straight. It's only then that the genuine, true happiness can be found. Because you're not planting anything in your garden that would kill it off. Everything you are planting, all the different plants nourish one another, support one another. It turns into a garden without any conflict. 